Hello, and welcome to another Bonkers Tale of Grimm. I hope that you have your thinking brains in, because this next story is really going to make it difficult for you to understand the rest of your life. This is called Lazy Harry, and it is a many pages deep. So while we go through it, I'm going to hum a small tune. We made it. Lazy Harry. <clears throat> Harry was lazy. And although he had nothing else to do but to drive his goat daily to pasture, he nevertheless groaned when he went home after his day's work was done. It is a heavy burden, said he, and a wearisome employment to drive a goat into the field this way, year after year, till late into the autumn, if one could but lie down and sleep. But no, one must have one's eyes open, lest it hurts the young trees, or squeezes itself through the hedge into a garden, or runs away altogether. How can one have any rest or peace of one's life? Do any of you out there feel like that? With something you have to take care of? Like a hedgehog? Or a small children? Like a little brother or a little sister? Because I feel like this all the time. Also, who is Harry talking to? That's what I want to know here. Is he just like walking around speaking to his goat? How would you feel if you were the goat and he's just complaining at you like this? Harry seated himself, collected his thoughts, and considered how he could set his shoulders free from his burden. For a long time, all thinking was to no purpose. But suddenly, it was as if scales fell from his eyes. And they mean scales like what you measure things with, like boop, 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 scales, as opposed to dragon scales, because he didn't have dragon scales on his eyes. That's a really rare disease that Harry was not having to deal with. Thank goodness. I know what I will do, he cried. I will marry Fat Trina. <laughs> Who has also a goat and can take mine out with hers. And then I shall have no more need to trouble myself. That's a very efficient thing to do. Harry's really thinking here. So Harry got up set his weary legs in motion, and went right across the street, for it was no farther, <laughs> good, because he's lazy, to where the parents of Fat Trina lived. It's not nice to think of someone as just Fat Trina. I want to know more about Trina. I think she has many, many more qualities. And Harry asked for their industrious and virtuous daughter in marriage. The parents did not reflect long. Birds of a feather flock together, they thought, and consented. So that's a saying that means things that are alike should go together, and it makes no sense whatsoever in this context at all. Because Trina is virtuous and industrious, as we've just learned, and Harry is lazy. So I think that Trina's parents really didn't appreciate her enough. We'll find out more later. Maybe. So Fat Trina, and the author continues to call her Fat Trina, even though he's already established that she is industrious and virtuous. We're going to say Fat, Industrious, Virtuous Trina became Harry's wife and led out both the goats. Harry had a good time and had no work to rest from but his own idleness. He went out with her only now and then and said, I merely do it that I may afterwards enjoy rest more. Otherwise, one loses all feeling for it. The fat, virtuous, industrious Trina was no less idle. Dear Harry, said she one day, why should we make our lives so toilsome when there is no need for it, and thus ruin the best days of our youth? Would it not be better for us to give the two goats, which disturb us every morning in our sweetest sleep, with their bleating, to our neighbour, and he will give us a beehive for them? We will put the beehive in a sunny place behind the house and trouble ourselves no more about it. Bees do not require to be taken care of or driven into the field. They fly out and find the way home again for themselves and collect honey and 
without giving the very least trouble. You have spoken like a sensible woman, replied Harry. We will carry out your proposal without delay. And besides all that, honey tastes better and nourishes one better than goat's milk. And it can be kept longer, too. It, it, it takes real brain power to be as lazy as you want to be. Laziness is hard work. The neighbor willingly gave a beehive for the two goats. The bees flew in and out from early morning till late evening without ever tiring and filled the hive with the most beautiful honey so that in autumn, Harry was able to take a whole pitcher full out of it. I think I see where this is going. Do you two think you see where this is going? Assuming that there's only two of you out there, there's probably more. They placed the jug on a board which was fixed to the wall of their bedroom and as they were afraid that it might be stolen from them, or that the mice might find it, those are the only two things that happened to Honey, Trina brought in a stout hazel stick and put it beside her bed, so that without unnecessary getting up, she might reach it with her hand and drive away the uninvited guests. I have no idea what's about to happen. Lazy Harry did not like to leave his bed before noon. He who rises early, said he, wastes his substance. One morning, while he was still lying among the feathers, in broad daylight, resting after his long sleep, he said to his wife, Women are fond of sweet things, and you are always tasting the honey in private. It will be better for us to exchange it for a goose with a young gosling before you eat up the whole of it. But, answered Trina, not before we have a child to take care of them. Am I to worry myself with the little geese and spend all my strength on them to no purpose? Do you think, said Harry, that the youngster will look after geese? Nowadays, children no longer obey. They do according to their own fancy because they consider themselves cleverer than their parents. Just like that lad who was sent to seek the cow and chased three blackbirds. I think that Lazy Harry has been reading other Grimm's bonkers tales. Oh, replied Trina, this one shall fare badly if he does not do what I say. I will take a stick and belabor his skin for him with more blows than I can count. Look, Harry, cried she in zeal, and seized the stick which she had to drive the mice away with. Look, this is what I will fall on him. So this is how Trina is going to be treating her potential child who is supposed to be taking care of the goose. She reached her arm out to strike, but, unhappily, hit the honey pitcher above the bed. The pitcher struck against the wall and fell down in fragments, and the fine honey streamed down on the ground. <gasps> there lie the goose and the young gosling, said Harry, and want no looking after. But it is lucky that the pitcher did not fall on my head. We have all reason to be satisfied with our lot. And then, as he saw that there was still some honey in one of the fragments, he stretched out his hand for it, and quite gaily. The remains, my wife, we will eat with a relish, and we will rest a little after the fright we have had. What matters if we do get up a little later? The day is always long enough. Yes, answered Trina. We shall always get to the end of it in the proper time. Do you know that the snail was once asked to a wedding and set out to go? Instead, it arrived at the christening. In front of the house, it fell over the fence and said, Speed does no good. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole story. I think that Lazy Harry and, uh, and his wife Trina have really found the best in a situation that they have made increasingly worse. So I think that the takeaway from this story is to always look on the bright side and the not take away from this story is to try to make a bright side for yourself to look at um we will see you next time thank you so much for coming <laughs>